Hello, everyone. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Um, I'm happy to have the opportunity to give you uh, a presentation from Trioptics on our contributions we can make to developing successful LiDAR systems. would like to give you a short overview about our experience and applications, the foundations um, for, for LiDAR systems, um, what we contribute on the path from the laboratory to fabrication, some insights about active alignment and active uh, uh, testing, as well as passive alignment and testing, show you some of the uh, equipment for uh, production and uh, end with a summary. Uh, Trioptics is already involved in this business for um, almost a decade, starting with uh, laboratory equipment to align first camera samples that were already able to glue and UV cure cameras all the way to uh, the uh, products we have today for semi-automated uh, mid to low volume, uh, low to mid volume production and uh, also to mass production for 24 seven automotive manufacturing. Likewise, in the uh, area of camera testing, uh, we started uh, back in 2010 in introducing uh, fixed focus collimators for camera testing and also for alignment applications. From these early contributions, uh, a range of products evolved uh, that provided more and more testing features and comprehensive testing solutions. The successes of these products can also seen uh, from the development uh, of the business too. Uh, here you can see the projects we've done over the past uh, 10 years uh, in that industry. And um, being evolved here already 10 years ago, you can see that we have a stable and continuous growing business in a variety of industries. What we have learned over the past um, decade in the alignment and testing for camera systems uh, have been employed over the past years in the development and manufacturing of LiDAR systems too. Similar optical principles and methodologies uh, can be utilized like in the camera applications. Uh, equipment concepts uh, that have be proven themselves uh, in the lab and under industrial environments can easily be adapted to uh, leader applications. Uh, in this field, we benefit from our vast experience in the development of metrology for optical and optoelectrical systems too. Besides cameras, we are um, using the technology already uh, in the LiDAR industry, uh, industry. so this covers um, the systems today used in the market like scanning systems or flash LiDAR systems. These are all things uh, that we have been working on and are uh, currently uh, working on. Likewise, uh, with other sensors uh, with the same principle like time of flight sensors, uh, also often used in automotive um, applications. So I would like to move on in uh, what we can really contribute uh, to the LiDAR industry. And this is what we understand from what the challenges and the requirements are to supply and deliver a quality LiDAR system. Um, the manufacturers, they are concerned and you take care of the performance of the system. Of course, reliability and safety is a big concern and issue and uh, challenge uh, as is vehicle integration. Also, uh, not to forget about cost. And uh, that's a very valid point, the manufacturability of these systems. So if we look at the quality triangle in this industry, uh, it's the scope, the functionality of the LiDAR system. It's the time to market that is of essence. And of course, the cost as this is, um, as we know in industry, where mass products require lowest costs of product. So how can uh, design be transferred from the laboratory into the mass production? How are we able to 
make this happen in shortest time at lowest cost. So this is uh, where the journey starts and where we would like to give answers. Um, and one of the answers is start early enough in the manufacturing process to um, employ the same methodology. Uh, what we can bring to the table and what we have developed over the past 10 years stemming from that experience is that the equipment that is used in R&D and in prototyping and with the first production samples um, all the way through ramp up of the pr um, uh, product needs to be in line. This is the best way at lowest cost at the shortest time to develop uh, such a system and bring it into production. So you cannot start early enough with these considerations because um, what's really essential behind all this is you can do this in steps, you can do this with uh, different methodologies, but um, what we learn from our experience is if you do this using the same building blocks uh, from the R&D all the way through to the production equipment, uh, this will increase your process and reduce your cost. So what we normally do is when we are involved rather early already in the R&D prototyping stage, um, that we develop an alignment and testing methodology for that uh, sensor and that concept. That includes an optomechanical concept. So how we do the measurement, how we, uh, what we measure, how we measure, uh, what the data and the analysis of the data is. The metrology, the process control will be uh, early uh, in the process being programmed in, in the software. We select the right uh, methodology and uh, we program the routines um, for that particular application. And we start this using this all the way uh, already in prototyping. This then can be transferred also to production equipment when we at this point in time would start uh, also doing programming on machine control. We would take care of data interfacing HMI. So when it goes to the production floor, even on low volume, all these things uh, are becoming essential and are required. So we build on what we have done in the, uh, in the first steps on the methodology and metrology, on the concepts and the control software we have developed. We add things, but we use the same building blocks throughout the entire process. And what's also most advisable and also highly respected uh, from the, the, the customer we've been working with, that they have uniform defined and traceable parameters all the way through the process. So later on in um, uh, manufacturing, the, the, uh, the people from R&D still see whether the camera performs as they has been designed by using the same metrics, by using the same parameters. They speak about the same MTF values or PSF values or uh, accuracies uh, they have seen in the lab and can compare this one-to-one -one with what is happening in manufacturing. So let me give you a, a brief overview about some of the findings we have made in passive alignment. Um, we show here for a receiver uh, application. So what we normally do, this is one of the basic concepts that we follow, that we use uh, focusing uh, telescopes for a passive alignment um, application. These are arranged uh, over the device under test, over the sample, over your LiDAR product to measure the device under different uh, field angels, angles. That is dependent on uh, the field of view, but also other parameters uh, of the system and uh, of the, uh, the chip, uh, or the receiver chip. Uh, then further down, uh, you can see the lens gripper for alignment. So this is a basic setup. We measure and then in situ, we align uh, the, the lens or the sensor to um, the, the right optical position. So what we basically do is we do this through focus scan curves on multiple areas on the receiver chip that is dependent on the requirement of that 
um, product or application. Uh, how many these are? These are normally like four or five positions or regions of interest we use on a receiver uh, chip. Uh, we find either markers or other visible structures that uh, are suitable for the process. Then we do a through focus scan. We find uh, the points for the highest sharpness or so the, the focus position for each of them. And then the alignment system brings it into the position, what you can see on the down left side, brings it in the position that all the, um, the focus positions are in the same Z position. So the lens is attached in a way that all across the uh, receiver chip, we have an optimum uh, sharpness, so an opti optimal optical quality. So this is basically one of the examples I would like to show you what we've did um, on uh, a um, LiDAR receiver just recently that was a, a SPAT array with a field of view of, of uh, 120 degrees by 30 degrees. Uh, here you can see the machine set up in the front, uh, the lens gripper. This is where we hold the lens and where the uh, micro robot would manipulate the lens into the uh, best position. On top, you can see the focusing telescopes uh, all brought into the right field position uh, according uh, the requirements. Let's move on also to the uh, active alignment application. This is actually what we have um, a wide experience in. Uh, particularly from um, camera alignment, because camera alignment normally is an active alignment because you have a, a camera that can be powered up that provides an image. So we generate an, an object, a target the camera looks at. And then by looking at uh, a defined target, we can align the camera optic, uh, optics to achieve uh, the best picture all across uh, the sensor. Um, likewise, we do this basically in, in LiDAR. Here we don't have a receiving um, chip like in a camera. We have an emitter, so a laser system that emits light. Uh, likewise, we can power this up. We can switch the laser on and we can capture the, the beam or the beams and use the beam or the response from the system for an active alignment. For example, to align the emitter optic to the emitter to the laser. So the point here is not um, the, the, the system, the methodology itself, like encircled energy or point spread function. Uh, it's more that these are already uh, incorporated into our uh, process software. So we just need to adapt this uh, to your system. This is already available in our program software and uh, can be used and adjusted to your uh, application. So there's a big benefit in this, not starting from scratch and developing this. Uh, it's a big benefit of having almost 30 years of experience with measuring these uh, parameters and now employing this knowledge and the existing technology to a new application. So I would like to take the next step on, on our journey um, to show you some of the uh, solutions that we have developed and that are essential for being successful on this route. Uh, number one, prototyping equipment. I just uh, briefly spoke about the building blocks. I spoke about um, the, um, the different things that we develop and have already developed that need to be adapted and adjusted to your uh, or a particular application. Um, in, in the face of prototyping, of course, you need a very versatile equipment. So we have developed equipment here for our own laboratory to fulfill the varying needs of our customers that come with all kinds of sensors, all kinds of uh, different um, um, techniques, uh, different field of views, different resolutions. Um, so we need to fit this and we are quite flexible here to set up the prototyping equipment. Uh, all the 
uh, the machine components and um, the uh, the software we're using in this phase is already the software that and and the building blocks that will be also employed later when we move this to production equipment. So we take this experience and the the, the same building blocks uh, then also into uh, the first step when production samples are required. Here we mainly work with our uh, ProCam uh, Align Smart system. That is a semi-automated process that gives you all the possibilities to produce the first uh, real production samples. Uh, and these are real production samples as we employ the same methodology that we would also later use in the high volume equipment here shown as the ProCam TT. Um, that is a uh, system really for high speed, high availability, 24-7 uh, production of such systems. All right, let me briefly wrap up uh, for, from uh, today's presentation. I try to give you uh, some insights from our experience. Uh, our understanding of the challenges of the LIDAR uh, product and production that number one, you have specified functionalities that you need to uh, ensure in the product. Um, achievement of cost targets in serial production, of course, is, is a, is a uh, big uh, issue uh, and a big requirement. And of course, this needs to be ensured in shortest time to market. From our point of view, we recommend um, simultaneous development of the concepts for assembly and testing, and also the implementation of these um, uh, concepts quite early into the process from the uh, starting with the prototyping phase and using these uh, building blocks and adapting them continuously to the changing requirements all the way to the production floor. So, um, in the essence, uh, use our experience, our technology, our brains very early in the process to make it a successful development. Avoid costly mistakes and by losing time by going back to the drawing board when you need to start into production phase. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dirk, for another interesting presentation. Um, Hopefully you'll join us on camera in just a second or two. We have had some questions uh, in the Q&A. Hi, Dirk, how are you? Hi, good evening. Excellent. Uh, so yeah, we've, we've had a couple of questions in, the, uh, in here. I mean, I know you've been answering in text as well, um, but perhaps you, you'd like to expand on your thoughts around the, the building blocks question. question was about the building blocks and uh, maybe the concern or a perception that you start with really bricks that are stable and, and cannot be moved or are uh, set from the beginning and then you end up in not being flexible with uh, what is really required if you will. Even throughout the process from uh, setting up uh, production or uh, changing products uh, in the uh, maturity phase of course, I, I, what I try to bring across is that uh, the foundation is there, that you have algorithms and uh, technologies set up. All of them are adjusted to the customer requirements. Plus, uh, uh, like I said in my, my last statement, my final statement, this is something that happens throughout the process. So we try to bring across and not start with another uh, algorithm uh, later on. Um, we start with, uh, with something proven and then adapted uh, all the way. We know that customers buy equipment for ten years of production process. Even a product change during life uh, during the time of the machine. So even if you have developed it for one particular product, in the course of this ten years, further products and uh, multiple uh, uh, modifications will follow after that. Sure, sure. No, in interesting. Um, just, just uh, you were a little bit quiet, Dirk. I don't know if you're able to get a bit okay. closer to the microphone. Um, okay. Let's try this. Ah, that's much better. Super. Okay. Uh, yeah, we, we could hear you. It was just a little bit quiet. 
Um, so yeah, we had another question. Um, uh, is there a risk of only proving what you intended if you use, oh, sorry, no, we just talked about that. Um, I had another question uh, that came through earlier. Uh, so you've talked about manufacturability. Um, yeah. But could you could you talk a bit about um, production equipment as well, uh, and what's the status? Uh, do we see any standard production equipment in the market yet, and how do you see that developing? Yeah, uh, probably that's um, um, the the um, um, downside. What we currently have, we have kind of established equipment and players in the camera market, as this has matured over the past you know, ten years or more. Uh, but in LIDAR, as we are rather early in, in, in the development, and as we've seen also through these presentations, there are multiple technologies um, um, employed. So we have not yet a, a manufacturing base or standard equipment. This is why mm -hmm. we really um, um, try to bring across that you need to be early um, already in uh, the phase of developing this equipment with the suppliers because you can't wait until the tensor is ready and then go to a trade show and, and buy equipment for this. This is mm -hmm. not yet available. So this is why we try to be early in the process helping uh, uh, customers say you need to consider this early enough because uh, when you have a, a, a successful product and then uh, what we know all of a sudden, then uh, an interesting, an interested customer wants to see production samples. Then it, you might lose time if you then start considering uh, equipment that is not available in the market yet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, in, in, interesting, and that, I mean, this is just the nature of the stage of uh, of, of evolution of uh, of this technology, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Super. Um, do, do you have any, any further thoughts on uh, the manufacturability side uh, that you didn't yeah. cover in your presentation? Yeah, we, we, um, um, the, the experience we often make in, in these early stages that we, we speak with people who are, uh, and these are mostly uh, very smart people, sophisticated people in their, in their field. They know all about uh, their their sensors, their chips, their optic, their the measurement principle, all the way to uh, data analysis, uh, key, um, uh, artificial intelligence, all the things. I, it's it's a very complex product, we know, mm -hmm. and you have to cast this into a very tiny sensor that needs to work reliably under the the, the worst uh, environmental conditions. So, uh, we appreciate that people have really tons of requirements they have to fulfill in parallel. Um, but uh, what we often learn when we speak with these people in an early stage and they show us their, their concept, we find things that, well, did you consider this filter might not work with an uh, optical alignment, the reference planes, the datum areas you have are not suitable for a manufacturing process. Your your optical components are not uh, that that fragile, or um, uh, how the, the the precision that is required is not possible to be um, uh, to be realized in in um, in mass production. So a lot of things where the um, the alignment testing, the manufacturing and and testing uh, requirements come to the come to the table um, are not really reflected and. That's not a. That is not um, to blame someone. We know what the people have uh, have to have in the head, mm -hmm. but this is why we strongly uh, recommend talk to the experts early in the process and also look at these details. That that will help you tremendously. And like I said, it's uh, the worst thing is you need to go back to the draw board, uh, drawing uh, boards. If uh, you maybe even have a, a a prototyping sample already validated and then find out you can't produce it. Super. Thanks very much. Really interesting insights. And I think an interesting perspective. Uh, that's, a, that's a really nice way to end the day today. So thanks for being here for the Q&A. And thanks for your time to prepare the presentation. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Have a great evening. Take care. Bye-bye.